Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's been a while. If you follow me on social media, you'll know that we're actually going to have a baby. Uh, so there's been a lot going on. Um, so I haven't really had time to do a lot with film and with the cameras and to sit down and make a video, but I finally had some time. <laughs> so today I want to do a review and I, I didn't realize it's been over a year since I've done a camera review. So today I'm going to review a camera that Mike Ekman let me. It's another USSR camera and this is the KMZ Start, so stick around. <laughs> So the KMZ Start was made from 1958 until 1964. Um, it was made during a time when SLRs were having increased popularity and it was around the time the Exacta was booming. So it was nicknamed the Russian Exacta and you can kind of see that especially with the shutter release button here. It's just like the one on an Exacta. So that was its competition at the time. KMZ, you might remember, was the maker of the Zenit, which I have also reviewed. Here's my Zenit. And you can see the, you can kind of see the resemblance of the two cameras. But um, the difference between the Zenit and the Start is kind of obvious. The uh, Start is a professional camera, or it was aimed towards professionals. It's a uh, fully mechanical system type camera. Uh, it doesn't have a meter. Once the Nikon F hit the market, the start really didn't have enough staying power. They only made one lens for this camera, the Helios 44 uh, 58mm f2 lens that you see here. Professional photographers complained about the ergonomic, journalists found it heavy, and then regular amateur shooters found it too expensive. So it didn't last very long, but let's talk about the features of the start. So kind of like the Nikon F, it has a removable prism. So when you push the button here to the side, the prism slides off and you can replace the ground glass that's in there. And uh, this, it's rumored that there is a waist level finder, um, if you can find one, but from what I've heard, it's hard to find a waist level finder. You can also get an M39 adapter that was made for this camera, so you could use uh, Zenit lenses on the camera, but those lenses don't have automatic aperture systems, so it's kind of pointless. You've got a self timer here, uh, this button here you can press also after advancing you can press to do mirror lockup. On the top you have the sh shutter speed dial here. You've got uh, one second all the way up to one thousandth of a second and bulb of course. And then also kind of like the Exacta, to open this up you got two keys. And like the Exacta, this camera has a built-in film knife. So right here is a knife so that you could cut your roll midway and save on film prices, you know, if you were in a rush or whatever. Um, so that was a more professional feature as well. For flash sync, you have two flash ports on the front for bulb and electronic flash, and then you had, you could sync at one thirtieth of a second um, shutter speed. It gave a lot of professional features, but like I said, it was short-lived. And like I mentioned earlier, it's got that big plunger type a shutter release button like the Exacta and it triggers the shutter and the aperture so after you take the picture you can't see through uh, the lens until you advance to advance the aperture back open. Another interesting thing is the depth of field preview is also in the plunger. When you turn the plunger to the left towards the lens um, you can do a depth of field preview in, in through the viewfinder. So those are all the features of the KMZ Start. It has a lot of nice features and um, had the makings of a really nice professional camera. It's pretty heavy, in, but I guess the Nikon F is pretty heavy too. But also the ergonomics of the camera, you know, holding, trying to press this button and it's kind of cumbersome. Um, not something that I really care for. The, it was the same thing with the Exacta. I didn't really care for this plunger um, and the, the weight of the camera. I'll give my experience with the camera now. I'll be honest, when I first uh, got the camera from Mike and I first tried to use it, 
the first roll I shot came out terrible. Nothing was in focus, but um, the focus for some reason inside, you ha there's a penaprism focus in there. And for some reason I have a very hard time seeing it and using it to focus. So I had contacted Mike and I told him, you know, I wasn't really vibing with the camera. I didn't, I was getting discouraged. I didn't know if I should continue to try and to waste film with it. Maybe I should just send it back to him. So Mike encouraged me to give it another try. And he said, if I'm still not vibing with it after that try, that it's perfectly fine if I'm not really connecting with the camera. So I decided to shoot another roll. I shot a roll of Arista EDU Ultra 400 film. And the same problem that I had with the Exacta, like I said, came to mind the ergonomics. I think that was what was really making me feel uncomfortable. And I also wanted to give up when I was trying with the, the Exacta too. And now that I gave the Exacta back to Mike, I wish I had one. And a lot of the pictures I took with the Exacta actually are some of my favorite photos I've taken. So it pushed me to try with this camera to see if maybe I could have that same experience or at least a better experience than I was having. So at first I tried to take pictures uh, just around the house and that just wasn't working and I've been really really busy lately. Doctor's appointments, constant doctor's appointments and things like that. So I just kept, it, it, the camera was just sitting there for a long time and I felt bad I need to get it back to Mike. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna just take it with me to the doctor and do like I normally do and take pictures from the car. And I thought that's gonna be interesting with this type of, you know, ergonomics and this type of uh, plunger to be shooting from the window, you know, like that. But it really didn't matter, it, you know, camera is a camera and I didn't feel any different with this one than I would with any other camera shooting from the car. And I actually ended up, there, I really like the results I got. You can see though that some of the pictures are kind of grainy. Um, that might be due to my fixer being exhausted. I, something happened to my fixer after only four tries. It wasn't really working anymore, so I'm thinking it got contaminated, but you can see there's some grit. But I do like these photos. I pushed the roll to 800 so that I could have some quicker uh, shutter speeds from the car since we're in the moving car. And these photos, I really like them, you know, taken around town on my way back to and from doctor's office. I set the lens to infinity and my shutter to 1000 and then just took pictures from the car so that I could make it a little easier on myself. So yeah, that's my experience with the camera. It definitely was a challenge and I think it really is just a matter of that it was, I'm using it during a time right now in my life that's a little bit stressful and hectic so I'm not really able to enjoy it and focus. But of course I want to thank Mike for lending it to me and encouraging me to stick to it because it's worth it. I would have felt really bad if I never got to actually review it and actually really give it a try. So my final thoughts really are things to consider with this camera is I don't know that it's an everyday type of camera for someone. Like I said, for me, the viewfinder was not very clear. Plunger is kind of awkward. It's pretty heavy. And the focusing throw on the lens is very long. So that wasn't easy either. That was kind of getting in my way too if you can see that. So those are the cons. The pro is that it's a nice lens. Uh, it's a fast lens, two, uh, f2 is pretty fast. And, um, and the camera is very rugged, um, just kind of like the Zenit. The Zenit's rugged as well. That's good if you're pretty rough with your cameras or you want to bring it with you in a bag, you know, and it's getting roughed around. It's a, it's a rugged camera. So um, those would be the pros for me. So if you want to give it a try, um, definitely it's an interesting experience. And if you like Soviet era cameras, check out my other Soviet era reviews that I've done. I've done, like I said, the Zenit and I've done the Fed 2. So yeah, that's it for this review. Um, I just wanted to do a quick one with this. I didn't get to use it very much, like I said, so I didn't have too much to say on it, but I'm glad to finally get back into camera reviews again. I have so many cameras that I would love to review and share with you guys um, if I could just get the time. I was so backed up on developing my film and scanning it. I still am. There's film hanging over here that needs to be scanned. I just have been putting together our nursery, putting together furniture, putting up wallpaper and at the same time being in a lot of pain <laughs> so um and then going to doctors for that pain so um my life is very very busy right now but 
Um, I have a lot more videos to come. I am going to be reviewing a Nikkor, micro Nikkor lens, one of my favorites, the 55 millimeter, because someone, I can't remember who, if you're watching this, if you remember, let me know. Someone recommended that while I was laid up and not able to go out and take photos because of my injury, to do some macro photography in the house, and I did, so that's coming up soon. So yeah, if you made it this far, thank you so much. Please hit that thumbs up. Please hit the subscribe button if you are new or if you haven't subscribed yet. It helps me out and lets me know that you are enjoying my stuff, my videos, so until next time, stay motivated and keep shooting.